adversity. You see, the Baltimore Ravens of the past, they've dealt with adversity, but they didn't deal with it in the best way. We remember even last year, they would go into these fourth quarters and have leads, sometimes even double-digit leads. And for a lot of those games, they would crumble. They would implode from within, and they would lose. And it was like, what, what is going on with this team? And they would do it so consistently. Last year and, and previous years before last year, too, injuries. They faced so much adversity with injuries, and they just could not overcome it at all. But this year, they faced some of those same challenges. And, hey, there were some games where they did give up leads because I believe there's a stat that says the Ravens, in every game this year, they've been leading in the fourth quarter at some point. But, of course, to the Steelers, to the Colts, and then to the Browns, they lost all super, super close games, but they lost nonetheless. But that's happened three times. There's been 10 times that the Baltimore Ravens have won. So they are clearly doing something right, especially when it comes to closing out games. We see this game against the, the Rams last week. So many times in years past the Baltimore Ravens. If it was last year's Ravens, they probably would have lost that game. Uh, but you see games like they had against the Cardinals where they had a big lead, but the Cardinals, they start creeping back. They start creeping back, but the Ravens, they end up shutting the door. You see, against the Chargers, ugly game throughout, low-scoring game throughout. Game is close at the very end, then the Ravens, they close it out. So this Baltimore Ravens team is much better equipped to deal with adversity. And that leads us to our very first question that came from Kenyari Suggs, adversity. Say, what's up, Engraven? First off, congratulations on another blessing to the family. It's always a joy to hear that as news. Hey, I appreciate that. Thank you, Kenyari. He said, also, did you know, this is the only reason why I added the last name to this question from subscriber, he said, Terrell Suggs is my cousin. Long story, haha. Hey, that's what's up. Uh, shout out to your cousin, by the way. Tell them thanks for everything. Uh, but let's talk. I know a lot of teams are questioning our offense and our offense and play calling, etc. lately. However, I'm a glass half full kind of guy. We lost to teams we shouldn't have early in the season. Adversity. We have lost close games by two points to the Browns. OT lost versus the Colts. Also a close game to the Cardinals. No, who wasn't a top team at the moment. We ain't losing no Cardinals. No, 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 no. We ain't losing the Cardinals. We lost to the Steelers. I think you, you, might, you must have felt like we lost to the Cardinals because that game, like, it, it was a lot closer than it should have been at the end. But, no, nah, it was the Steelers. But, anyway, I'm sure that was just a typo anyway. And he said, um, now, on to the back end of the season. We have won close games by field goals, overtime. We have faced adversity this year. And I like to say we have done well. Now, let's figure this O-line situation out and let's get excited about this playoff run. Or should I say... Super Bowl run. P.S. And oh, yeah, get well soon, Kyle Hamilton. Prayers. Oh, yeah, for sure. So, yes, you, you spot on. Spot on. The Ravens have done a much better job this year of dealing with adversity, a much better job of handling it head on, taking it on. Because, again, adversity is something that's going to happen. And, and you think about life. We're, we're going to face adversity in life. We don't like to. We don't want to. But if you just go through life and everything, you just coasting, you just surfing through, every, everything's great. And we love that. If you hit a bump in the road, you ain't going to know what to do if you haven't been through adversity before. But see, adversity, it prepared you for those moments. And just like with the Baltimore Ravens, had they just been blowing every team out this year, like they did in 2019, had they just been beating everybody down, and we would love that, but then at the same time, they wouldn't really have been battle-tested. But they are truly battle-tested to this point of the season. And they will have some more tough battles because you got the Jaguars coming up. You got the 49ers. You got the Dolphins. You got the Steelers. So you got some tough games coming up. So the Ravens, but going into the end of the season, this very last part of the season, the Ravens have definitely dealt with their fair share of adversity. They'll, they'll have some more, but this prepares them even better for the playoffs. Team, keep it clean. Before we continue with this episode of questions from subscribers, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn your notifications on so you do not miss not one single video, not one single update, not one single question from subscriber. And also, leave a like on the video because it helps out a whole lot. The bye. Next question came from my guy Oreo Cookie. He said, hello, Engraven. I'm conflicted now. I just saw what the Ravens look like after a bye, and we looked a bit rusty. So now I don't know if we want the bye or not. I would like to know your thoughts after the game, after that game. Now, I, I, I'm still with getting the bye all day, every day. I, I know a lot of Ravens fans are like, no, we don't want the buy. Uh, we look rusty, like you just said. And they think about 2019. Let it go. Let it go. Uh, it, it is okay. It is up to the Baltimore Ravens to be a top team. Like, think about this, too. 
Do you not want to be in the Super Bowl? Think about that. Because if you make it through the divisional round, through the uh, the AFC Championship, uh, through the and, and if you win that to get to the Super Bowl, is the Super Bowl the week after the AFC Championship? No. You have two weeks. You have a bye week in between that. So I don't want to hear people say, oh, we don't want the bye, but you want to get to the Super Bowl because it just doesn't make sense. Take the bye. If you get it, great. If you don't get it, okay, great. You still know what you got to do. It's up to the Baltimore Ravens to be as fully prepared as they possibly can uh, to make their playoff, excuse me, to make their Super Bowl run. So it's up to the coaching staff to have them guys ready. And it's up for the players to execute and go out there and do their thing on the field. So I, I, I don't want to hear the, the being scared about the bye and all that. And, hey, everybody entitled to their own opinion, so I respect it. I don't agree with it, but I respect it. But – they, they just got to be ready. Stay ready so you ain't got to do what? Get ready. Next question came from my guy, Martin, who is a Team Keep It Clean patron. Appreciate it. If any of y'all would like to become a Team Keep It Clean patron, you can go to patreon.com slash vids. And if you don't want to, that is fine as well. Now, he said, it's been a minute since I sent a question or comment in. It's been a busy season, but I just want to give a shout out to Geno Stone, Jadavian Clowney, and Calvin Noy. I'm so happy the Ravens didn't do their usual. We like our guys when it comes to the edge rusher position. Well, I think they did like their guys, but they knew that their guys were dealing with some injuries. Like, Bowser wasn't the same. David Ajabo, he was dealing with his little thing. But he played through it for a little bit, but it just wasn't enough. But, yeah, it worked out. Uh, he said, uh, shout out to Geno Stone for, hard, for showing hard work pays off from practice to starter. He's been amazing. Really, the whole team has, minus some coaching miscues. Great job, team. Go right <laughs> Hey, man, yeah, shout out to, uh, I, I think one of the biggest things I've seen from Geno Stone, uh, specifically just patience, patience, just waiting. Um, he was a late round pick and ain't really get much time to shine it. And he, he, well, he kept being behind some safeties who were really good. He was behind Earl Thomas. Then he was behind Marcus Williams. So he just, his, his, his time, he felt, I get, maybe he felt like his time was coming. Maybe he didn't. But when he was in the games, any games that he played in, he made the most of them. So Happy for Geno Stone. Uh, it's, he has been phenomenal. Um, I just really wish that, and, and I get it, it's tough because they, they probably like, hey, we're paying Marcus Williams all this money to be a free safety. Uh, and Geno Stone, he came out of nowhere, but and now he's playing strong safety. He's not playing free safety anymore. I wish they would just have left him at free safety, but it's not my call. Hardball's questionable challenge flag. Next question came from my guy, Trevor J. He said, what's up, Engraven? Hope you and the fam are doing well. We are doing great. I appreciate it, Trevor. He said, so apparently on Sunday's game, John Hardball said he was going to call a timeout anyway to make sure they stopped the two-point conversion, which they did. Yeah, it did work out. Uh, so he threw the challenge flag instead to see if they could get anything out of it because why not? Smart move or no? Yeah, he, he did say that uh, he, he threw the challenge flag so he could prepare them for the two-point conversion, like you said and mentioned, that they did stop. Uh, so it, it ended up being a, a genius move because it was like calling an extra long timeout because usually the timeout's either 30 seconds or a minute. But um, it since they reviewed it and then they were like, oh, well, we actually can't review that play. Um, we can't challenge that play, I mean, because it's a reviewable. It's all touchdowns and scores, all touchdowns and turnovers are reviewed automatically. So they were like, oh, well, the Baltimore Ravens will be charged a timeout. But that sequence was so long, and, and that gave the Ravens a whole lot of time to prepare. So, yeah, it ended up working out. Next question came from my guy Howard. He said, what's happening, Graven? I'm not a fan of seeing EDC always roaming the sidelines during the games. Ozzy never did that. It's just something about the way that looks to me. Am I tripping? Your thoughts? I'm like... No, I, look, I, I can't tell you how to feel about anything. That's completely up to you. But I think that's something that's so, like, minute. It's something that's just, I, I, it's not, to me, in my opinion, again, our opinions could differ. I think that's something that's just not worth complaining over. Like, what, what impact does EDC roam in the field? What does that have to do with anything? Is EDC out there calling plays? Is he getting in the player's way or something? Like, if anything, like, that says a lot to me about EDC. Like, the fact that, because I, um, I know Falcons, their owner or GM, he did the same thing. But it, to me, it shows, like, are, are you willing to be out there in the elements where the players are and stuff? It could be cold. It could be windy. You could be, out up, you could be up in a press box. You could be up in a nice, fancy suite. But you're actually being out there where the coaches and the players are. That says a lot, that, that, that says a lot of good to me. That, that says a lot about uh, being humble and, and humility to me. The fact that this big money guy, the guy cutting the checks, 
or no, the guy right signing the check. So it's, it's Bashadi cut the check. But this says a lot to me that EDC in his position that he would be willing to be down there uh, with them. So I, I do not think that that's a bad thing at all. I, I feel like that's like nitpicking. But again. To each his own. He also said, uh, going into that Chargers game, the Ravens had a good rotation in the running game with Gus Edwards and Keaton Mitchell. Then, in the Chargers game, they throw a monkey wrench with force-feeding Justice Hill. Phasing out Gus the bus, which makes no sense to me. Is it me or does it seem like ever since Harbaugh's been here, the Ravens always do something off the wall out of nowhere? Just my thoughts. Curious to hear yours. Yeah, Ravens are a very um, interesting team when it comes to patterns, when it comes to strategies. Sometimes they can outthink themselves. Uh, but there can be sometimes when they can outthink uh, all of us because we'll be seeing something and then we like, what what is going on? But there's a method to their madness. So as far as the running backs, um, I, I know they did talk about it with, with, with Keaton Mitchell. Maybe they just um, they don't want to put so much on his plate because, again, he's an undrafted rookie free agent. Um, so it wasn't like it was the Ravens plans to have Keaton Mitchell here, but he just didn't get drafted and it worked out. Um, so they don't want to throw everything on his plate at once, but uh, as the season goes along, you can give him more and more uh, responsibility. You know us fans, we, we want to see him out there all the time, like, hey, Keith Mitchell, let's go. Uh, but and, and then there's playoffs coming up too. Uh, you just want to have your guys fresh as, the, as fresh as they can possibly be, uh, but you want to have more guys be able to do more. Like Justice Hill, that's like a third down guy uh, catching passes out of the backfield. I mean, all of them are catching passes out of the backfield now, uh, but Justice Hill, uh, pass protector, uh, he was probably the one that they trust the most in pass protection uh, back there uh, between him, Gus Edwards, and Keaton Mitchell. So that's another thing you got to think of. So the rotation, it all just depends on context. It depends on the situation and it depends on the circumstance too. Help me understand. Next question came from my guy Ray Sean. He said, what's up, engraving the team? Keep it clean. I need help understanding this number one seed debate. This might be long, so let's just get right into it. From my understanding, the people that do not want the number one seed are the people that are traumatized from us getting in, it, getting in 2019 and us not being prepared and being one and done. The argument is that when we got the number one seed in 2019, we should not have rested our starters in the last Steelers game, which is a valid point. Uh, we also came in unprepared and in my opinion had a poor game plan on both sides of the ball with absolutely no adjustments at any point in the game but isn't that something we can fix if we were to have the number one seed again it sure is it really is and, and remember too in that game do you remember all the drops had all those drops been catches even half of them been catches completely different ball game but let's continue he said if we were to get the number one seed again how about we play our starters instead of resting them at least for a half i agree uh, we may need to play our starters anyway if it comes to winning the Steelers game in a week 18 to even get the number one seed. That's true as well. Uh, he said, how about this next time? We come in with a better game plan and be prepared to make adjustments early and stick to what's working. Finally, our coaches need to make sure during the bye that our team is fully prepared to get to work to make it to the AFC Championship and then the Super Bowl. Right. Preparation is everything, man. And I, I, I agree with that. Like, the, the starters still getting some time in. Now, if you need to win that Steelers game to get the number one seed, okay. Starters play that full game. Try to close that thing out. Um, but if you don't need it, hey, let the starters at least play a half or something. Let them still try to get in rhythm and whatnot. And then end the season on a high note and then go from there. So, hey, he said, personally, I am for the number one seed because instead of needing to win three playoff games, we only need two. Before 2021, both the number one seed and the number two seed got the bye. And the majority of playoff teams that had the bye not only went to the Super Bowl, but won the Super Bowl. That is not the case for lower seed playoff teams. And is the 2019 year the only time that we went or one and done in the playoffs, especially after having a number one or two seed? We can't be scared from just one mishap. This is the NFL. It's any given Sunday. You just have to learn from it and move on. You can't expect the same scenario is going to happen every time you get the number one seed. <laughs> Especially if it's not even a pattern mm, That's true Because that's been the only time the Ravens had that number one seed With this team uh, He said anyway sorry for the long rant But what do you think engraving the team keep it clean I'm looking forward to getting your perspective And just like we won't be at any point in the playoffs I'm out I love that ending because that's perfect And same thing I said earlier man I, I, I'm with the number one seed all day Every day And people who are, are like no we don't want the number one seed Again I take you back to the AFC Championship Ravens win the AFC Championship, Super Bowl in the next week, they're going to have a bye week. So they, they're going to be right back in the same situation that so many people are scared of. What? No, they, they'll be fine, man. They'll, they'll be fine, man. And, and, and it's up to them to just, again, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready. Number one seed, give it to me.
Next question came from Javo. He said, to answer your question about Ravens Wired, yes, they still do it after a loss. Oh, okay, because he had asked me before, like, um, if I watch Ravens Wired, and I told him I, I don't. And it ain't, I don't got nothing against it. I just don't be watching it. I, I've seen it before, but I just, I just don't be watching it. Um, and then when I think the, the days that it I know it obviously stays up on YouTube and stuff, but the days that it comes out, I'm not home, and I just never circle back around to watching it. It just gets so busy and so. But anyway, um, he said, my question for you is, but I do, I do appreciate that, though. That because you said that they still do Ravens Wired even after a loss, I respect that a lot and I love that. He said, My question for you is not Ravens related, but more about your channel. Question number one uh, is, How many episodes do you think you have done so far? LOL, <laughs> no clue. Uh, because I mean, it's on here. I think they, um, I don't know if it's public, but I know I can look to see how many videos there are. And <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. Uh, and he said, my last question is, what was your thought process from when you first started doing this until where you're at now with your channel? Oh, that's a really deep question. Um, I remember when I first started, uh, especially when I just did the uh, just talking about Ravens. Uh, my goal was, to, and this is still a goal of mine that I still want to make happen. Uh, but my goal of mine was to be able to take people away uh, from their problems for about... 10, 15 minutes, however long a video is. Uh, just so we talk about football, we talk about whatever, and we just have a good time doing it. We enjoy ourselves doing it. And hopefully uh, the people that are watching and, and commenting and leaving like and, and subscribing, all that stuff, the people that are supporting, uh, hopefully they enjoy it as well. Because uh, that, was, that was my biggest thing. Because it, it's so many problems that go on on a daily basis basis so many issues that people face on a day-to-day -day basis people face issues all the time and i'm sure somebody out there right now watching this video that's going through something that has really just been bothering them that's been frustrating them that they stressed out like crazy from but i, I wanted to be able to try and i know we can't alleviate any stress from anybody anything like that i i, I get that but i wanted to just Try to put people at ease just for a little bit uh, every day that we made a video. So that that had been my goal from the jump, and that's still my goal every day. Um, no matter what it is that we're talking about, no matter what's going on, if we're watching a game together, doing questions from subscribers like this, doing an update video, whatever it is, is that hopefully with whoever's watching, this could give them a little break from whatever issues, whatever problems that they got going on in their personal lives. Oh, well, this is interesting. <laughs> this next question came from my guy, Cooper. Uh, he said, hey, man, I'm just starting up my Ravens YouTube channel. Main reason why I did this is because you have inspired me. Thank you for all that you do. Oh, no, you ain't got to thank me for nothing. I, I thank y'all, though, because y'all y'all helped keep this thing moving. Y'all really do. Um, so I appreciate y'all. Uh, he said, anyway, my question is, how do you start up a YouTube channel? I know that's a stupid question to ask, but this is the first time I've done a full Ravens channel. Hope you read this and have a wonderful day. Let's fly. How you start up a YouTube channel? Just go for it. That's it. Just go for it. Get a camera. I'm sure you got a phone. Um, you can use your phone because the, the, the cameras on phones are amazing nowadays. I don't know if you got AirPods or not or you got headphones. Or that, those, those could be your mics for now. But I think um, one of the biggest things with starting up is not waiting for the perfect situation. You don't have to, because I know a lot of people, they they like, all right, I, you know, and, and I get it, because you want your stuff to look good. You want it to be maybe professional if you want, but it don't got to be professional in my opinion, but you, you want your stuff to be on point. So some people are like, oh, I got to have this camera. I got to have this mic. I got to have these lights. I got to have this computer. I got to have this, this, that, and the third. I got to have all this stuff, and then I'll start. And then when they wait for all that stuff, they could either wait and not get everything and then they'd be like, oh, no, well, nah, I ain't going to do it no more. Or they could get all that stuff. They could have all the stuff. It could be looking perfect and whatnot. And then if it ain't jumping quick, if it, the, the channel ain't going off quick, then they'd be like, oh, man, this was all a waste. I'm done. I ain't doing it no more. So my, my advice, in my opinion, don't wait till everything's perfect. Don't wait till everything's perfect. If there's something that you want to do, Go for it and just build as you go along. And also, you got to have the utmost patience. Passing the torch. Next question came from my guy, D3. He said, what's up, Engraving the team? Keep it clean. Hope all is well with you and yours. I got a question for you. How does J.K. Dobbins fit into the Ravens' plans at running back next year? He doesn't, in my opinion. He does. I think he's done with the Ravens. I think the Ravens are done with him. Not an old, like, bad blood type of way, but I think it's just, no. Nah. If he does come back... I could see them doing a one-year deal that with no guaranteed money, but I think it's done between him and the Ravens. But anyway, he continued. He said, hypothetically, if Gus is RB1, Gus' contract is up after this year, too. 
So, yeah. Anyway, he said, hypothetically, if Gus is RB1 and Mitchell is running back two, the only two on the outside looking in are Justice Hill and J.K. Justice Hill has a two-year contract, so he's under contract next year. Gus is not. Only Ravens running backs under contract next year, Keith Mitchell, Justice Hill. J.K. Dobbins, Gus Edwards, they are not. So we'll see. I, I can see them coming to an agreement with Gus Edwards, but J.K. Dobbins, I just I, I don't see him fitting in. Uh, he said, what say you? Again, thanks for the insight and keep up the great work. Now, I appreciate you, man. Thank you. Um, yeah, I, I, I think that Justice Hill, I mean, excuse me, not Justice Hill. I think that J.K. Dobbins uh, is done with the Ravens. Um, Gus Edwards, hmm, that's a tricky one. Um, I, I can see that one going either way uh, because with what they do, um, I feel like J.K. Dobbins, he's like the perfect running back for their offense. Um, but just the injuries, the injuries. Uh, Gus Edwards, they, I think they love Gus Edwards. Um, and I, I could see them trying to be like, All right, hey, Gus, stay for the low. Stay, stay, stay for the low. I can see them trying to sign him to a super, super cheap deal like they did before when they re-signed him. Oh, boy, they got like they, – they, like they, they held Gus Edwards down, like um, not necessarily in a good way, uh, like before his contract. Because remember, like, he would be going off, and they like, all right, Gus Edwards, you coming out of the game. They would not let his numbers go crazy, man. And I, I think it was calculated, so when it came to contract time, they could be like, oh, look at your numbers. They were like this, that, 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 that. Yeah, you had a high average and whatnot, but your carries were low, your yards were blah, blah. So they, I feel like they, they held him down. So when it came to pay him, they could be like, oh, uh, no, nah, we don't want to pay you that much. And it worked out. Worked out for them. So now um, I can see them trying to do that again. Um, Cause I think moving forward, like next year, I think Keaton Mitchell, I, I think it'll be his time. I I I really do. Um, but yeah, we'll see. But as far as J.K., I, I think he's out of there. Uh, Gus on the fence. Uh, Justice Hill, he will have one year left at that point. So I, I think they may actually keep him. Unless, well, not even comment. I mean, not even question, but more so a comment or a story. Uh, came from my guy Aaron. He said the girl who changed everything. In my life. He said, hey, man, hope all is well with you and your family. I want to share a story about the girl who had made a big impact in my life uh, more than anyone else besides family and friends. Uh, she is such an inspiration. Uh, she's an Indian girl, and I love her since 2018. That's the same year Lamar debuted. Uh, she's been my favorite superstar since that year. Then on September 27, 2020, she talked to me, and I was inspired by her call. Because I was in the 10th grade, I kept grinding and grinding until my senior year of high school. Uh, it was the first call outside countrywide. It made me feel so much better. Now I'm in college. Both Lamar and Swara, that's her name, uh, have been my favorite character since 2018. Uh, years later, they only got better and better. They are both very different characters, but they are both uh, my personal special superstars. Uh, the call made me feel special because I just took Calculus 1 in high school. Ooh, that sounds scary. I never even took that in high school. <laughs> uh, and he said, uh, and it almost changed classes because it was hard, but as time goes on, I got better and better. Uh, and he said, go Ravens. And sorry for the longest story of your life, LOL. No, it, it, it's all good. So I, I appreciate you sharing this. And shout out to, to you for sharing it. Shout out to Swore uh, for being an inspiration. Shout out to Lamar Jackson for being an inspiration. And shout out to you uh, for being an inspiration with even sharing that story because um, – you talked about facing like challenges and stuff and that's important and, and again that's what this episode of question from subscribers is started with adversity uh so it just i guess it all just comes full circle because you talked about your adversity that you faced and the challenges that you faced uh but you dealt with it you dealt with it and you dealt with it head on you talked about how you were thinking about switching classes from calculus one but you stayed with it and you just got better and better so that's important so we appreciate you being an inspiration to us uh, to close out this episode. So I appreciate all of y'all. Thank you, team. Keep it clean. I love you all. Again, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video. And leave a like on the video because, again, it, it does help out a lot more than you realize. I appreciate you, and we out.